Hi, this is Tom Hoskins for Mining Journal. I'm here with Tom Perigudoff, who's the president and CEO of Apollo Silver, which is a Toronto listed silver explorer with a pair of silver projects, one in California and one in Arizona. Tom, how's it going? Thank you very much for joining us. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's going well, and thanks for the time. No problem at all. So for those viewers who aren't familiar with Apollo Silver, why don't you just start by telling us a bit about the company and your flagship Calico Silver project? Sure, absolutely. Well, look, uh, we uh, we were formed back in uh, 2021 uh, with uh, the amalgamation with a, a, a private co uh, and uh, as part of that transaction, we acquired our, our silver assets uh, and raised 53 million uh, Canadian. Uh, and um, ever since there, we've really been focused on advancing uh, Calico, uh, which is composed of, of two resources, the Waterloo resource and the, uh, and the Langtree resource, uh, which together add up to about 166 million ounces of silver. Okay, thanks. Thanks for that, Tom. So... Aside from the significant maiden resource, what is it about Calico that makes it such an attractive project? Look, and I think there's a number of things. I think jurisdiction is one of them. Uh, we're operating in San Bernardino County, California. Uh, uh, it's a county that is uh, uh, very uh, comfortable with, uh, with responsible resource development. There's more operating mines there than any other county in the U.S., uh, so I like the jurisdiction. Uh, the fact that uh, the resource is, is large, uh, 166 million ounces, makes it one of the largest undeveloped silver uh, resources in the uh, in, in in North America. Uh, and I think uh, the, the other thing is uh, the deposit style, very low geological risk. Uh, it's a very thick sequence of, of mineralized uh, sediments. Uh, as opposed to more structurally controlled underground type uh, uh, precious metal mines, this is this is relatively uh, quite low geological risk, and I find that quite attractive as well. So, just want to come back to the jurisdiction element. I mean, clearly, yeah. the U.S. is not known for its overly hasty permitting process. Um, yeah. But, but what is it like uh, working and advancing a mineral project in California these days? Well, look at, um, I can tell you our experience has, has been uh, extremely good. Uh, for our 2022 drill program, for example, uh, within six weeks of application, we were issued our drill permits. Uh, we are going through the process of renewing right now, and it's been about two or three weeks, and I've been told uh, that we'll get those permit renewals this week. So, I mean, from that perspective, I'm very happy. Uh, I can tell you as well, you know, from from a, 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 a jurisdictional perspective, uh, you know, San Bernardino County, and uh, it, it really is is um, as I said, uh, very very supportive of of resource development, uh, and you know, something that differentiates us, I think, from a lot of other companies uh, that are operating in California is their our mineral title type. We actually own. The, the title to the land as opposed to just the mineral rights. Uh, and so what that leads to is a, a, a bit of a simplification in a lot of our processes uh, and dealing with the San Bernardino County as a lead jurisdiction for a lot of the work that we've done. Okay, that's good to know. Thank you, Tom. Um, so you were obviously busy, very busy at Calico last year. What yeah. was the focus of the exploration program? Look at um, big, big focus this year for us was um, around advancing the resource category. Uh, so uh, we completed about 10,000 meter drill program, uh, the, primarily focused on moving those ounces uh, into measured and indicated and allowing us to get on with engineering studies this year. Uh, another objective that we had as part of this program was to see if we could identify opportunities to expand that resource uh, the maiden resource was limited to about 150 meter depth on average, uh, and I can tell you we've been successful in identifying above cutoff grade silver mineralization beneath the uh, the current uh, uh, bottom of our of our resource. So I'm looking forward to uh, seeing how that revised resource estimate incorporates those ounces. Okay, and so what else can we look forward to to from you guys in 2023? Uh, presumably, there's going to be quite a lot of news flow from 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 drilling. Anything else that we should be looking yeah. out for? 
Yeah, you look at, uh, you know, obviously getting uh, all the results from our uh, 2022 program out to the market. Uh, we started off the year with a good release. We've got others coming. Results are coming in. Uh, all of this sort of leading to that, uh, the revised resource estimate. Uh, Stantec has been engaged to complete that uh, work and uh, they've already commenced. Uh, so the revised resource estimate is going to be a big hurdle for us. And then on the back of that, we will uh, get on with our engineering studies. Uh, we've also been undertaking uh, a phase one metallurgical uh, program, uh, and I expect the results will uh, be in our hands and out to the market in the coming weeks. Thank you, Tom. Um, I just want to finish with a sort of wrapping up question about your central sort of message to investors. What do they need to know about the investment opportunity with Apollo Silver? Look, I, I, I think the key is a, a, a tier one uh, asset in a tier one jurisdiction that's very undervalued right now. And I think that um, 2023 is going to be a year where we start to unlock uh, and get a step change uh, in, in that valuation. Great. Well, thank you very much indeed for that, Tom. That's all we have time for. But I'd just like to thank you very much indeed for joining us today. All the best. Um, we'll see you again soon. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. And that concludes this video for Mining Journal. Goodbye.